Hello and welcome to the QI report out for missed medications within the physical health community teams within the Mid and North Division. Today you'll hear about our amazing team that we've been working with, about how we're going to achieve um, missed medications within their team. So our agenda for the final report out is for the purpose of the RPIW, the current state view, ideas and key themes for improvement, the proposed future states, outline the implementation plan and the lessons learnt. Purpose of the RPIW objectives, to reduce the number of incidents relating to missed and delayed medications within the Mid and North Physical Health Community Teams by 50% within a 12 month time frame. As QI facilitators, we were tasked with looking at missed medications in the community, namely the Mid and North Community Physical Health Teams, as they were really keen and engaged to look at this process. To be able to determine where the problems were, we first had to collect data. And we did this by looking at incidents. So first of all, we looked at incidents over the past three years and we found there were 53 incidents related to missed or delayed medications, primarily insulin. We also went into the teams and we did some observations. So we sat with the ISPAR admin team who take on the referrals, refer them onto clinical triage and forward plan them or take any other actions. We sat in with the clinical triage team who received the referrals from ISPAR and then either forward planned or actioned. And we also went out with the clinical teams to see how all this process impacted them when they went out to see patients. So as Hayley has described, we looked at some observations with the team and we produced some information on flip charts to be able to share with the team. Before we shared this information, we asked the team to tell us their, what's described as work as imagined, so the work as they do it every day. And what was really interesting is that the work as imagined that they described to us was very, very similar to the observations that we observed. So right at the start of the process, we were all on the same page. Some of the challenges within that process were around over-processing, so referrals coming into the team, not having the right information on, being sent back to GPs, and that process could happen three or four times, and in worst case scenario from our incidents, a referral was sent back to the GP five times to ensure the right information was on that. There was also some over-processing around um, referrals being printed out, signed, scanned back in. And that's something that we think we've been able to eliminate from our process already. Um, we just need to have another conversation with our med safety teams. It's really exciting that we can achieve that already. There was also a lot of waiting, waiting for patients to get their medication, waiting for clinicians to be able to triage the referrals, but also waiting for our admin staff to be waiting for that information to come back in. So as part of our process, we'll talk about how we're going to rectify those wastes as we go through. Okay, during the workshop, uh, we used the five whys to dig uh, into the root causes for why patients had missed medications. Uh, we narrowed it down to four root causes. Uh, the four main causes over processed, uh, over -processed systems, visits not being uh, forward planned, um, and we did not receive the referral. Uh, the patient is at home as well. We looked at each individual case and broke it down and found further contributing factors. In recognising all the overprocessed systems as a root cause, we believe that standardising work across the division will prevent delays, errors and confusion. So these are the areas we um, identified as needed to be standardised across the division. The ice bar SOP needed to be reviewed, clinical triage needed to be created, creating an induction process to support standard practice in record keeping and use of digital technology community care packs to be standardised, record keeping templates to be created. Uh, also following discussions, um, we identified the importance of um, working as a division, both admin and clinicians. So we will be setting up divisional team meetings. These are the different packs required by the community teams. Clinicians work together to agree what was necessary to reduce the waste and by doing this allows them to put together in one location, cutting admin time by five staff members attending different sites across the division to one person centrally. These can then be distributed across the division as required. 
So when we looked at standards for good record keeping, we realised that we train people in a RIO process, but what we don't tell them is what good record keeping looks like. And it was very process driven. So what we tried to think was how could we um, have some templates for record keeping and train our staff when they first come in. And some of that was around templates for syringe driver and insulin that we currently have identified as our high risk drugs. So we looked at standardising forward planning as part of that, but also we changed the template to include have medications been forward planned, have medications been checked to make sure that we have enough there. Fundamentally, what we needed to look at in the process as being done at the moment is to understand what brought value to the patient. And in this case, value to the patient is we had the right person in their home when expected to be able to actually administer the medication. And that is the value to the patient. However, as part of the process, there will also be non-value added but necessary steps. So these may be steps that are essential for the valued step to take place or is required by law or policy. And then there is the waste. It is the waste we are looking at to eliminate. And these are the next steps that we looked at within the process that has been done as current. So the second highest uh, issue as identified by the QI facilitators when they were observing medications missed in the community was the prescription process. Um, so we used the swim lanes diagram to um, to look at the current process as it stands and to help us to calculate times and to understand the number of tasks um, that happen throughout the process. Um, uh, and we were looking particularly at waste, duplications and defects. So the current process takes approximately 505 minutes and has 6% of value to the patient. And on the stream, on the swim lane diagram that you can see, the green post-its indicate the value to the patient and the yellow post-its are showing non-value added but essential steps in the process. Moving on to our uh, proposed process, um, we would like to use ERS to, for referrals and prescription charts received from GPs um, and using, using ERS can significantly reduce the time and steps needed. Uh, the diagram shows the reduced number of steps. Um, each of the steps along that process were the previous yellow post-it notes from the old process. Uh, sorry, the new process would take uh, 55 minutes and adds 55% of value to the patient. So just to summarise the benefits of, of the new process using ERS, uh, it's a secure system which removes the need for admin to verify email address and by printing out, signing, scanning, uploading and shredding what arrives as an uh, electronic document in the first place. Um, it allows instant clinician to clinician communication to discuss the prescription charts, removing inappropriate admin involvement with clinical discussions. And uh, GPs already use ERS to refer to community mental health teams. Uh, using ERS will make communication quicker and direct and also give acknowledgement uh, to GPs that their referral has been actioned. ERS also provides an audit trail for all users for referrals and prescriptions. So as part of our uh, investigations into the process, we um, highlighted that creating a focused admin clinician triage function would really help our processes. Um, the benefits of that would be that we can reduce from using nine clinicians for a triage every day across the division down to around four clinicians per day across the division uh, and with a focused admin support. Um, this will allow the freeing up of other clinical staff um, and allow the, tr the triage team to just focus on triage. Uh, we're planning to do a PDSA cycle to start on Monday so that we can fine tune the details. Uh, we've also proposed uh, to have one phone number for the ISPAR team. So failure to full plan was the main reason for mismedications observed by the QI facilitators. 
So as a group, we use the process, the five whys, to look at why forward planning um, was being missed. Um, a few of the ideas and possible solutions are forward plan or insulin dependent patients for six months at a time on the same date across the division. We're just focusing on insulin patients at the moment because they are our daily um, administration of medication. Um, we need to implement training to help staff to utilise the tools provided. Um, part of this process would be to identify a digital champion for each nursing team and to ensure they have appropriate training um, to support the teams and to engage the digital champions in ongoing meetings and development to ensure the feedback is received. So in summary, we have uh, an implementation plan which encompasses 32 actions in total um, around the themes of training needs for the teams, um, around technology improvements. We also want to do some QI mini projects for the future, one being around uh, the implementation of a single number for the ice bar which we hope will include patient feedback around how their contacts with ISPA and the clinical team works for them. Um, we would also like to work with our HHFT colleagues to allow ward staff to use ERS to make referrals into the service. Um, this also includes process changes for the ISPA and our clinical contact uh, colleagues. Uh, which will result in formal standard operating procedures um, to allow um, everyone to know exactly what it is they're supposed to be doing. We've already um, put some of our actions into um, operation. So we are going to be ordering, with the kind permission of our Director of Nursing, 24-inch monitors for our ISPA colleagues next week to allow them to work more effectively. Our digital lead has facilitated a pilot of using the ERS system to make referrals and that will start in September. We have added a visual prompt to our progress note templates um, to uh, remind our clinical colleagues to check for medicine stocks in patients' homes. Our community packs have been reviewed and updated already and we've communicated with all of our colleagues around the information that's available on Rio, which they may not be aware of. So just to summarise the key lessons we've learned from our QI week, um, we've identified the need to create a culture in which all staff uh, at all levels feel able to challenge poor and or outdated processes and practice. We've also identified that there are significant gaps in training for clinical and admin staff. And also the importance of reducing the divide between staff performing different functions within the division and also to acknowledge that everyone has an equally important part to play in the patient journey. So we'd first like, like to thank you, thank our sponsor Adam Smith, our facilitators, all our colleagues that have covered our roles and Rocco who provided therapeutic presence. <laughs>